Hey YouTube, Mochismo Eugene, another video from Extra Strategy. I got Leo with me tonight. You guys have met him before. Yeah, he wants to hang out with me tonight. Looking all gruffy. What's up, boy? I've been away for a little while tonight. I took in a comedy uh, event tonight, Ali, Ali Sadiq. So I'm in the Syracuse Theater. It was great. Took a buddy of mine out. We went out. Two dudes going out, hanging out, having a laugh together. These are the things you do as you begin to realize that it's not all about the who you go with. It's, um, it's about just, you know, going as you are and um, just being who you are. And uh, we had a good time. I took him out. It's my neighbor, so we had a fun time. Now, your heart pill to swallow, and you're even more difficult to digest. You are a heart pill to swallow, impulse chosen ones, and you're equally as hard to digest. Like my buddy Andrew talks about on his channel, think about that one for a minute, is what he likes to say. Think about that one. Your heart pill to swallow. Uh, it's pretty much going to go along with your natural born leader. Empath's chosen one. Uh, we could talk all day, all night. 365 of a year. Or 366, whatever they call leap year. We can do it 12 months out of the year and we'll still come back to the same common denominator. You are unique. You are a peculiar person. As such, you will encounter many, many problems that a lot of people around you, you may conclude haven't. They have had struggles just like you. They've had ups and downs just like you. They've had uh, losses, wins, draws. They've had uh, loved ones die. They've had loved ones born into the world. They've had all of the human things that have occurred in your life. They've had tragedies. They've had uh, blessings. They've had curse, curses or unfortunate events that happen in their life. But the difference is in how you were able to not only bounce back, you were able to be resilient through it all. Unlike dark energies of the world that we now know who are called narcissists. They have always passed the buck. They have always um, threw the rock and hide and, and hid their hands. They've always blamed it on the thing outside of themselves. They've never taken inventory of themselves. Time and time again, I've told you, they have never introspected. That's a word. That means going within yourself, taking a total count of all and everything that has occurred in your life as best you can. It's going to take honesty. It's going to take really searching through yourself, past, present, and future, determining what part you play in every single event in your life. Even when you conclude that most of what you've gone through that happened to you wasn't directly your fault, you were not directly responsible for it, although you were there. You can own up to the fact that you were there. You were in that position from a child up into an adult. You were there, maybe not by choice, but by circumstance. We, chosen ones and empaths, we are able to reflect on these things. And then we can come to where we are in the present moment and say, man, I went through hell and back. This or that may not have been directly my fault, but the whole bigger point of it all, I believe that I am very fortunate to be here in the way that I'm here. Now, unlike the dark energies and the narcissists, they don't do this inner work. Now, they're looking at you, and they know, without a shadow of a doubt, 
that these things that they would never have ever been able to endure or this thing be it singular they know that that is something they would have never embraced but then they take into the totality of all things that you've gone through some and most of which they have taken you through as of present and they cannot wrap their brain around why you are still standing in the way you're standing why you still exist the way you exist why you don't have a grudge like they do this is the hard pill to swallow you were last man out you were the underdog you were the one they counted out they counted you out the, the, the narcissist and they expected by their persuasive nature to have society count you out and in a big way society may have counted you out because of their envious and inferiority complexes you can take an empath that's not really aware of who they are or not really awakened to who they really truly are and they will have scorn for you in many cases because guess what the narcissist has taught and trained them in the society of what that seems like to be norm and so what they do is narcissists always recruiting healthy people to become like them like nature scorned for vicious revenge or uh, vengeful and different things like that so now a lot of us who've awakened out of narcissistic abuse we look back at some of the disgusting behaviors and patterns and uh, demeanors that we in fact had that were not us were not our DNA even though we behaved in fashions that were not appropriate we did things that were unbecoming of who we are we are now able to see man that is not even who I am I was rocking with this girl and I ended up doing this that and the other I was rocking with this guy I ended up bagging up blah 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 doing this and that and the other I was out on the street doing this that and the other whatever you would want to put in that blank extremely unethical extremely demonstrative things that a lot of us put ourselves in these positions that uh, you know made other people's lives miserable and made other people's lives difficult we see now that we in and of ourselves are not built that way so this is how we have to look at life in that perspective you have never embraced spiritual matters religious matters even you the empath or the chosen one is something innate to your nature that does not make you tick that way and that thing is conscience see an empath and a chosen one has a conscience from birth it is put in you from before you were ever even created as a human being that is the nature of God he put that essence in you what happens with you you go on to channel that you think the narcissist has not had does not have the opportunity to grow into uh, a consciousness of who they really are they had the, amp the ample opportunity that you did but for the reasons that they didn't are very complex and they're very extensive in nature they were exposed to the same elements that you were they were groomed in many ways like uh, an empath was but we were resilient we were recruited as well but we were defectors God didn't see fit for us to end up being that monster that person that despised the idea of God the idea of something that was in control of uh, life and breath and so when we began to evolve and began to build a character of sorts even the things that we did, as I mentioned in times past, that, that we're not really totally okay with anymore. And some of us empaths and chosen ones who have not wholly embraced that, who have a little resentment on a deeper level of what has been done to us. So much so that we can't heal ourselves in a, in a beautiful way and come back to who we really are or find our way back to who we are. See, these things, what the narcissist has done, 
they have administered appeal to you of discord and scorn and resentful, resentment and hate. hate. They are passing appeal on to you to swallow that they can't even swallow. Your essence is that pill. So what they do, they want to force feed you their diabolical dark essence. They want to feed you their dark essence. Have you digest that when in fact they cannot even swallow your presence and they definitely can't digest your essence. And so that alone bothers them. And so what they do, they seek to try to capture, sabotage, hold hostage, kidnap your character for ransom. They kidnap your character, your mood, your emotions, your giftings. They try to capture it, kidnap it, hold it hostage for ransom. But what they don't understand is you're priceless. You're priceless. There's no ransom that can be given for you. Price has already been paid before they even came on the scene. And the price was the sacrifice that God made for you to continue to live in this environment called the world so you can finish what he started. You are, to here, you are here to finish a job. You are here to finish an assignment. And the beautiful thing is we don't wholeheartedly know what that assignment is in full context. We are forever getting pieces of that assignment. Pay attention to the assignment. Pay attention to the assignment because each one of us has given, been given an assignment. Um, I know this sound a little bit over the top, but if you're in, if you're in heal, healing mode, if you're in elevating mode, if you're in, um, uh, you know, rising up on your vibrations, trying to uh, gain a lot more intu intuition on the things around you, or you, if you're engaging in a real critical thinking way, in a mental thinking, critical thinking way of the things around you that we normally never pay too much attention to, if you're elevating that, your consciousness, paying a little more attention, you are steadfastly gaining what your assignment is. So you're a hard pill to swallow, man. You are a hard pill to swallow. And so that being the situation, that is something out of your control that you are a hard pill to swallow. You know? All I can tell dark entities is get a big glass of water and wash it down. But either way, it's going to regurgitate. We are a hard pill to swallow. And if you swallow it, can't digest it. The narcissist cannot digest, meaning wholeheartedly wrap their head around the fact that you have the goods and they don't. Because they deserted the true self. They have nothing to run back to. They have nothing to run back to. They can't go back to square one. They can't go back to see the house that they set on fire. The, the house is the essence of who they were supposed to grow into. <clears throat> they didn't water that flower. They didn't nurture their self. They didn't nurture. They were looking for other people to, to, to soothe their needs, wants, ambitions. It was all put in place for them. They didn't do the work. They were always... coddle in some kind of way, shape, or form, whether it was physical, mental, emotionally, academically, spiritually, they were always given that cookie before bedtime or that piece of candy when they should have brushed their teeth and went to bed. 
They were never made to wait in line. They were never meant to wait their turn. So there's no restraint there. There's no discipline there. There's no stamina there. There's no tolerance there. Waiting is a beautiful thing. Waiting builds patience. Waiting builds tolerance. Waiting uh, strengthens your ability to accept, own up to responsibility. Waiting does a wonderful, uh, uh, it does a wonderful amount of things. Once you grow into the understanding of why the wait was necessary. But if you've never had to wait for anything, um, when you have to wait for something, <clears throat> it throws you. You have no patience for it. You're irritable. You're agitated. You have mood swings. You start looking at other people as though they're less than you are. So this is the mentality of a narcissist. Cut and dry. We can go a million different ways in talking about why and how they be I mean, why they behave the way they do and how is it possible that a human being uh, which looks like a human being like you and I can have such heartless uh, behavior. And this is the why. And to say they deserted their true self to a lot of us who are listening and a lot of us who are already aware of what this really means, it still is a hard thing to grasp because you are not like that. So what you do is you imagine that they should be able to reason this unreasonable thinking. They should come to a point to see that what they have done has hurt people. See, you're thinking, you're using your reasoning, you're using your emotions to capture why it should be possible for them to do this. Well, you have to almost put yourself in a cold-hearted, calculated space. And if you can't do that, watch some of these horror movies that you uh, and I have, uh, have, have tended to appreciate and like and flock to and thought that they were uh, craft, uh, craftily, craft, craftfully made, that they were very, very well directed, very well script. Look at some of these movies and you'll see that uh, this is the how, this is the why. Because whoever directed these movies, they came straight from the mind of a narcissist. And that's why you'll find yourself, man, whoever wrote that movie was twisted. Stephen King, uh, I don't, I'm not to say he's twisted, I'm using this for, for, for an, an example. Uh, he has been, uh, has been it, it has been said, I don't know if it's true or not, and years ago I'd heard this, and you guys can fact check this if you want. Uh, I mean, I'm just using this for, for emphasis to my point. It was said that, alleged that Stephen King said most of his inspiration for a lot of his books and some of his movies, horror movies, came from the revelations in the Bible. Revelations. And I think he said he read, he's read uh, Revelations probably, I don't know, uh, or, or, the, or the, the Revelations, the New Testament. I think he's read it like twice, the whole, whole Bible, twice in his lifetime. I don't know if that's cover to cover or whatnot, but you guys have to fact check this, but the principal point is he got a lot of his inspiration from Revelations or the Bible. And uh, if you've ever read Revelations, it's, it's really gory. You know, it's a lot of allegories and it's a lot of metaphors in there. And some of it is just, if you can believe, stark detail, three, five, 12 heads, six arms, two legs, ten legs, whatever, you know, it's almost like uh, Revelation is describing something of a spider, uh, octopus, tentacle type, human, half human, half goat, animal, cow, different things like that. And uh, the hydro, hydro, hydroglyphics, 
and the different things that they wrote on rocks way back in the days, you can see that this was it is depicted as such. And so a lot of this stuff may have some validation uh, of sorts, but I don't really get into a lot of it one way or the other. I just know when you're living in a world that we live in and you've discovered narcissist and the personality disorder and all the dark, uh, destructive, disturbed stuff that they have done and can do and have the propensity to do, uh, it, it can be very overwhelming. So I just always encourage you guys, stick to what you're able to digest as, as is, as such, and work your way from there. Because don't overload yourself in the deeper meanings and things in life to the point where you miss the point of life. And so uh, that's the best way I can put it. So you are a hard pill to swallow, and you're equally as hard to digest. That being said, bless.